yeah, so we've got a group of victims in Romania, a group of victims in the UK, and then another group of victims, a third group of victims, who went to the police in 2014 and 2015, and um, their case dragged on for four years and was eventually dropped by the Crown Prosecution Service. And they are the women that my firm, Hugh Jury and Partners, represents. And they are now bringing a civil claim, so not a criminal proceedings, they're bringing a civil claim for damages, so for compensation from Andrew Tate alone for the personal injuries that they suffered, including rape and other physical assaults. So you've got taken collectively three entirely separate groups of women. There's no overlap, as far as I understand, between any of the cases who have all made allegations against Andrew Tate and Tristan for a period of nearly a decade. Um, so I think the earliest allegations are from 2013 and the latest are from 2022 when he was eventually arrested in Romania. So it's the scale of this is massive. And our client's hope would be that if they're successful in the civil proceedings, it will provoke the police um, into reopening their original investigation because they have major concerns about how that investigation was conducted and um, and the way in which it was it was dealt with. So this is a kind of last last resort for them. It's they don't, they wish, you know, that when they went to the police almost ten years ago, this had just been dealt with properly, but it wasn't, and so they've had to look at other alternatives. Um, but in 2015, the Hertfordshire Constabulary case initially carried out an investigation. Mm -hmm. At that specific time, what was the sum of that case? We represent four women. Three women, three of our clients, went to the uh, police in 2013 and 14. So their stories are slightly different, so I'm just going to separate them out. So two of them were recruited by Tate to work in his webcamming business. And... Um, during the course of a very short period of time, they really didn't work for him for a very long time, but he um, physically assaulted both of them on numerous occasions. And, In what way? Uh, strangling, hitting them with a belt, uh, verbal aggression, all of those kind of um, traditional types of assault so for the audience like choking it can sometimes lead to subcon subconjugal hemorrhages in the eyes yeah exactly and that's exactly what happened in this case yeah. um unfortunately and i appreciate it's upsetting to talk about he seems to have tate seems to have from the evidence that we've seen a particular affinity for that sort of abusive physically abusive conduct. And he's trying to counteract this now in the court of public opinion by saying, oh, you're kink shaming me. Well, no, yeah. sex is based on consent. And exactly. And those women weren't consenting. Yeah. Also, also, it needs to be said that some of the physical assaults had absolutely nothing to do with sex. They were just a way of him asserting dominance over them while they were working if they weren't doing things that he wanted them to do. So taking it back a step. So there were physical assaults and then there were also uh, in one of um, in w one of our client's instances, um, two, uh, two instances of rape, um, one of which was witnessed by our other client and another she witnessed the aftermath. So this is also that accounts are told on a documentary, I believe. Yes, I think I think quite a lot of this material is already yeah. in the in the public record. Um, that's why they're so difficult to prosecute. In this case, I mean, how many rape cases have eyewitnesses? In in this case, in our client's complaint against Tate, there were eye, there's eyewitness accounts yeah. from from one of our clients seeing and hearing the assault of the other. Right, so that's extremely rare. Then our third client, who also went to the police, she was in a a sort of relationship with Tate she has voice notes text messages from him saying I love raping you yep and they you know these this is public as well that's in the public domain as well and um 
And so you think, well, how much more evidence would be necessary to pursue a prosecution? And indeed, the police have confirmed to us that they believed there was enough evidence to pursue a prosecution. They handed the file over to the CPS and it was the CPS who decided to take no further action. The police have been criticised at length and the CPS for the way that they treat victims, the way that they prosecute cases, an obsession with victim credibility rather than the hard evidence and testimony. So all of those things come into play. I don't know why the CPS chose to take no, no further action. You know, I don't... Um, the reasons that they've provided don't make any sense. And I do think it was a combination of things. I think, one, they were... You know, they probably there probably might have been a bit of um, kind of bias and, you know, whether that was conscious or unconscious. I think the investigation dragged on for a very long time, during which time Tate left the country. He left to he moved to Romania in 2017 in the middle of this investigation. So my thought was that they thought, well, he's gone. You know, it's been going on for four years. We're not going to get him back, etc. He also, at this point, was not a public figure unless you were very into a specific area of martial arts. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't. He what he that you know he wasn't even influencing fully then. That came, I think, 2019, 2020 is when he really rose to prominence. But he certainly wouldn't have been known to the police as a as a kind of public figure at that point. He was. He went on. Big Brother in 2016. And he'd been on various reality shows before this. Yeah, it's it's evident that he... He um, likes fame. He, he's obsessed with it. He's obsessed with money and fame. So do you think that if this had been nipped in the bud and sorted, a lot more damage wouldn't have happened in Romania? Well, that's certainly true. I mean, so hypothetically, if... If the police had pursued a, a swift prosecution, if the CPS had charged, and if the court found him guilty, because there is enough evidence there. No yeah, in our in our view, there absolutely is. Yeah. Um, then there never would have been the, this whole Romanian saga, and also the rise on the internet of of Andrew Tate and all the problems that that's come with would, we'll would not have it. happened. So, you know, um, we are now as a society desperately scrabbling around for ways to combat this extremely um, negative and kind of pernicious narrative that Tate represents. I'm not saying it's just him. There are lots of misogynist influences. A lot of people.